The war in Gaza rages. The Houthis are committed to attacking commercial ships so long as Israel keeps making military strikes into Gaza. The U.S. and its allies have committed airstrikes against the rebels in Yemen. What if the United States decides to up the ante and switch over to tactical nuclear strikes? Stay tuned to see what will happen. Welcome to Magnus Division. Please remember to like and subscribe to view more content like this. So all across the news, as of in the recent United States and allies, airstrikes against the Houthi rebels in Yemen. And if I mispronounced their name, oh well. Get over it. You can leave me a hateful comment. I don't really care. Um, if that I have almost no knowledge of. So let's keep it simple here. Um, so after these strikes, the big debate is how effective will they be at reducing the Yemen rebels' ability to strike um, commercial shipping that's going through this corridor right here. Very narrow corridor, which is ideal if you're going to make attacks, and these Yemen rebels have been getting better and better with the munitions that they're being provided by Iran. And they're making these attacks. For anyone that doesn't know, if you're not paying attention to the news, which you really should, they're making these attacks because of activity here in this little strip of land, very tiny strip, where these people here have committed to continuing their military activity against the people in this strip, specifically against the militants in the strip that are mixed with the civilians. So civilian casualties have been very high, including... More children killed in the couple of months since October than in all the children killed up here by these people attacking these people in defense of their ethnic Russian people here they say are being discriminated against. So, you can weigh in on good, bad, and different or what's happening, suffice to say that anytime a large number of people are being killed, it's probably not a good thing. And world peace and world stability is generally a good thing. So anything that brings a halt to that is generally going to be considered a good thing. Now, in this scenario, instead of the strikes being particularly effective, they were ineffective. And the United States decides that it wants to take things up a notch. Precision guided munitions have not been effective, so they're going to take it to the next level. What that means is theater level, or what some people refer to tactical nuclear strikes. How are they going to do this? In this scenario, we're going to use the B-2 stealth bomber. Um, the B-21 Raider is not operational yet. They have test flights, but it's not operational. So we're going to use the Stealth Bomber. Why the Stealth Bomber over other platforms? Well, I would say that launching sub-launched Trident missiles could be taken out of context or really raise some big concerns with other nuclear armed nations such as Russia and China. I would also say that it would be a bit of overkill, um, depending on the warhead size, a number of warheads. And so in this one, we will be using bombers. We will be using stealth bombers just as a added precaution against any air defense systems that the Yemen rebels have been supplied by Iran. And we're going to use the B-61 Mark 7s. And so the B-61 Mark 7 has a variable yield warhead. And we're going to set these as ground strikes. Reason why ground strikes, these are specific to penetrate hardened bunker sites. So, variable yield warheads. What does that mean? That means that allegedly we can choose somewhere like on a dial, which is fascinating to think. Nuclear weapons, you can just click a dial and say, you know, 
hey, do I want this many number of people dead or do I want a medium number of people dead or do I want a crap load of people dead? So in this one, we're going to go with a slightly lower yield. So there's allegedly four yield settings, something between 10 and 340. So don't know exactly what those four are. Um, and anybody that says they do probably shouldn't be, you know, shouldn't be mentioning it. You know, if you really do have knowledge of that, you really shouldn't be talking about it. Having said that, wouldn't be the first time information gets leaked. So let us go with a very minor. This is going to put this somewhere in the range of close to World War II atomic bomb yield. Now those were detonated at a height, but recall we're trying to go after hardened sites. So we're going to start with a lower yield. We are going to start with a few sites here. So let's see here. To my intense amount of research, which is about 15 minutes, give or take. No, I'm just kidding about that. But So we're going to place one here. And then we're going to place a second one. Each of these are going to receive two strikes. Again, we are trying to actively minimize casualties, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> um, using nukes, I'm trying to minimize casualties, but that is what we are trying to do. So we are going to hit one last location. Okay. So we have crossed the nuclear threshold for the first time since 1945. We have made several strikes against these strongholds. And let's see, what is the civilian casualty fallout going to be? Remember, these are ground strikes. We're trying to minimize the amount of civilian casualties. Let's see, fallout dose. So based on winds and everything, you do have a certain amount of fallout and everything. That's inevitable. 497,068 people. So right there, you have surpassed. And again, when I say surpassed the number of casualties in the Ukraine war that's been going on, you know, almost to the two-year mark now. Well, the exact number of casualties is unknown, but so it's obviously going to be surpassing that point even by the highest estimates. So in a matter of hour, maybe two hours, we have greatly surpassed two years of conflict. And these are with very low yield weapons, comparatively. So obviously, big impact. So would, these, would this be more effective at preventing future strikes? Absolutely be more effective. No doubt about it. Um, would it set back world stability? Absolutely. No doubt about it. Um, we would be providing justification for Russia and other countries to deploy nuclear weapons as they would see fit in similar situations. So nuclear weapons are extremely effective, extremely higher amount of um, I say fallout, but I use that term um, not in the proper nuclear sense, but um, higher amount of collateral damage. Let's put it like that. Far higher amount of collateral damage, far higher amount of casualties, far more effective, far more 
effective at reducing uh, global security. Um, because, as we've seen, justifications for a lot of actions have been based upon previous actions by the United States and coalitions. So, our actions when it came to Serbia and Libya has been used as a justification for actions in Ukraine and Georgia and um, you know, Crimea Peninsula, which is part of Ukraine, or was part of Ukraine, now part of Russia, um, to be specific. So, that's that. Um, if you're interested, we can kind of look at what happens if these were slightly higher yield. This is really for entertainment purposes at this point because you know I don't think a scenario where the United States would employ a higher yield bombs under any circumstances. I mean, it'd be very, very remote that we would do something with these lower yield weapons. But let's let's just show what the difference would be. So let's take a let's just reset things real quick. Okay, everything's reset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, exact same thing. Except this time now, we're going to use the higher end of the yield of the B61 Mark 7s. So we're still going to go. So we saw 497,000 casualties. Let's go here. Going to do the double taps again. Keeping them relatively close. So these are relatively close strikes because they're hitting these targets and it's not trying to maximize. Look at the difference. So went from 15 kiloton yield warheads to 340 kiloton yield warheads. Difference went from roughly half a million casualties to now 3.6 million casualties. Huge difference, great Earth model fallout. Um, I'm sure when you look at fire damage and such, far le far greater. So that's the risk with nuclear escalation. Casualties just go higher and higher um, as the yields go higher and higher. Thankfully, since the height of the Cold War, yields have increasingly went down. Directions more on multiple smaller yield warheads as accuracy has went up. But, having said that, no amount is fun. The yields are still incredibly high. Um, we have B-2 stealth bombers that have the capability to drop 1.2 megaton bombs. So, you would see a significantly updated amount of casualties. And, why not? Let's look at that real fast before we head out. All right, so now we are going all in. We're going with the B-82. Same scenario. Same double taps. You just hear the difference. I mean, you can visually see the difference in the representation. Of course, this is a simulator, and it's not meant to have a great graphical representation, but even there you can see the difference. Now let's take a look. So there is a level of diminishing returns here. We see that the jump from 15 kiloton to 340 kiloton rose the casualties from uh, roughly half a million to 3.6 million. Now... The jump from 340 kiloton to 1.2 megaton jumped from 3.6 to 5. Point, basically 5.6 million. Um, you know, clearly, 
A, there's going to be a limitation of the population size in the city that can have it. You know, you can only kill as much people as you have there. So that's when you get into overkill, to quote some old rock band name. <laughs> um, but you get into overkill and also a diminishing level of return. Um, so let's look here. Let's take it off fire. Yeah. Fallout's going to be greater. The other thing you're going to have potential is more chance to cause casualties in other countries. So these would be crossing into other countries, which would increase their casualty rates. So, all right. Very, very low likelihood of this happening. Extremely low likelihood. But you can see how serious the escalation is when it comes to casualties and how quickly they can start to stack up and compound. So, um, just for educational purposes, and that's it. So, hope everybody enjoyed the video. Um, I would encourage you to check out some of my other videos. I am doing some movie reviews, some TV show reviews, some just basic vlog type of things, talking about some of the shenanigans myself and my cousins used to get into uh, when I used to live in this town. Um, Lancaster, Ohio, and all the debauchery that went in in that town. Um, just more varied content. So please check it out. Uh, please like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more. So I think we need to explore a U.S.-Iran conflict that goes nuclear. So I think that's going to be next on my agenda. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day.